Hi YouTube, uh, I just wanted to stop by and answer a couple questions that I got on the last video. Um, the first thing, uh, the Pope had said that there was not a donkey involved in the uh, at the infancy. Well, according to the Gospel of James, there was in fact a donkey involved. Mary was riding on a donkey, according to the Gospel of James. And I think the Gospel of James is earlier, so I would beg to differ with the Pope. And let's see, the second thing, someone had asked about Timothy and uh, how Acts of the Apostles switches back and forth from uh, first person to third person, uh, seemingly when Timothy is involved. Um, <clears throat> the only thing, and I'll have to do more research on this, but the only thing that I can tell you about that really is that Timothy, I, in my opinion, Timothy... Uh, first and second Timothy, Luke, and Acts of the Apostles were all assembled by the same person, all of them. Uh, we have no mention of any of those books until Irenaeus pops up in the late second century. And uh, Tertullian, just judging by his statements on Timothy, they probably did not exist uh, much earlier than Irenaeus. It's very likely that Irenaeus put them together. Um, <clears throat> Secondly, the second part of that, Acts of the Apostles itself is a hybrid. Is a um, hybrid. It's a uh, it's multiple texts. Um, some have suggested that originally it was really just a um, Acts of Peter, something like that. It was just about Peter, and that uh, someone came along and added Paul. Um, in fact, who was it? Uh, Robert M. Price mentions that, and I have the tendency to kind of agree with that, although I haven't been able to detect the text any earlier than, once again, Irenaeus. Um, so, Irenaeus is the prime suspect for authoring the, uh, the Pauline books that are not Pauline, the ones that Paul didn't author, and that would be First and Second Timothy, uh, he's also the prime suspect for making changes to the Pauline text so that they will fit into his theology. So um, first and second chapter of Galatians is highly suspect of being inauthentic. Um, there's a chapter, or rather a, a section in 2 Corinthians where it talks about Paul uh, being in prison and going over a wall, etc., etc., that if you pull it out, the text makes sense. It doesn't make sense with it in there. Um, it's just really kind of off the wall, but uh, it's an interpolation. Um, those things were added in order to support the historiography of Paul. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I've got for you today. Let me see if there was another thing. Oh, oh, and uh, someone wanted to su suggest that uh, perhaps... The Gospel of Mark might be uh, the original text of Catholicism. Um, <clears throat> it's possible, I suppose, but there are many, many problems with that, I think. And first, you have to have all the parts in order to have Catholicism. We'd have to kind of define what Catholicism is. And really, there's not that big of a difference in I mean there there are differences there are theological differences between say the Ebionites and the later Catholics but uh, they believe a lot of the same things as well and so you know we have to kind of define what Catholic is could the Markinites or the Valentinians be considered Catholic for their time uh, it's quite possible um, now they certainly would not uh, be considered Catholic later. Irenaeus pounds them. Tertullian pounds both of them. Uh, and of course the Ebionites and the Johannine theologies are also her heretical as well. But these, uh, a lot of the ideas that make up Catholicism were borrowed from the early theologies. Um, for example, you know, uh, Marcionism appears to be the first theology where you could convert to Christianity as a Gentile and still stay a Gentile, where the Johannine theology 
and the Ebionite theology in order to convert to Christianity, to become Christian, you had to be Jewish first. So if you were a Gentile and wanted to be a part of their group, you'd have to convert to Judaism and start practicing all those rules and regulations, and then you could be Christian on top of that. The, obviously, Catholicism is more friendly to Gentiles than the Johannite theology or the Ebionite theology was. But, and, and in that sense, they borrowed the Marcionite ideas. You know, so where, where does, what would Catholicism look like before Marcion? In a sense, you could call all of these theologies Catholic, if you wanted to. Um, the, the Catholic theology, the later Catholic theology, uh, beginning, beginning really with Irenaeus, but, but technically probably closer to the back end of the 3rd century, early 4th century, where they're dating all of their stuff to Peter and Paul, trying to get a lineage of their, their version of Christianity all the way back to the beginning. Um, that's, that really hasn't occurred in the 1st and 2nd century. I'm sure somebody has done it. You know, Valentinians, the Marcionites, they may be dating this, doing uh, some some kind of backdating as well to try and get back to Peter and Paul. But, uh, in fact, you know, the, the lineage that Irenaeus uh, mentions in his work, um, even though it looks totally fictional, um, he could have borrowed it. It's certainly possible. He could have borrowed it from another theology. And uh, one other thing about that. Someone suggested recently that Irenaeus looks like a uh, pissed-off Valentinian. I've read some of some of his works that tell me that he's a Gnostic. He's absolutely Gnostic, just as Gnostic as everybody else back then. So, you know, what is Catholicism? And I think, you know, Catholics have tried to say, well, Gnostics are uh, polytheistic. And again, they're as polytheistic as anyone that's ever believed in a trinity. They're just as polytheistic. They may have more more parts um, than just three, but they're equally polytheistic or mon monotheistic, however you want to look at them. Anyhow, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'll get back to you shortly. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye.